Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today we're going to see how we can estimate the gas or oil in place without shutting in a well. Now if you're not already familiar with the flowing material balance, it's a proven RTA technique that's been used for well over a decade. Using your daily production volumes and flowing pressures, we can estimate the original gas or oil in place for a well. In a conventional well, we get a straight line if the well is in boundary dominated flow. In an unconventional well, or a tight well, we get the minimum contacted volume while the well is still in transient flow. We can also quickly check out the well's productivity to see if the well is healthy. This can show us signs of changing skin, liquid loading, or pressure interference from an offset well. In any case, the flow material balance has been an invaluable RTA technique for thousands of engineers. The challenge comes when we have multi-phase flow, high water cuts, or dropping below the dew point or bubble point. These real situations can cause havoc on the flow material balance because we're not accounting for the proper saturation changes, compressibility changes, and relative permeability curves in the reservoir. To solve this, we've taken work from Dr. Chris Clarkson at the University of Calgary and applied it to the flowing material balance to make it multi-phase. So this technique is now available and ready to give you more reliable flowing material balance results for black oil, gas condensate, volatile oil, and wells with high water cut. Today I'm going to show you a few case studies to illustrate how you can apply this. But in my LinkedIn post, I'm going to include a link to a very detailed video explanation by Louis Matar of how the multi-phase flowing material balance works. I encourage you to watch it for a comprehensive explanation. For now, let's check out a few examples. When we were testing this, we wanted to start with a known answer to compare against the interpreted result of the multi-phase flowing material balance. So in this case, I have a conventional vertical oil well. I've got the well in the center here, and I've done a hypothetical production forecast. I've got my flowing pressure drawing down. I have my oil rate expected to increase because of that drawdown. And then once I reach my bubble point, the oil rate is increasing in this case. So again, we have a known answer where our reservoir size is 160 acres. When we do our flowing material balance in the traditional single phase way, this is how our data looks. We get a really upset looking piece of data once we drop below the bubble point. So in this case, we really don't know how to interpret this, but maybe that's a guess at 180 acres. So what we've done is we've enabled you to turn this multi-phase button on. And we can see now, as we make our interpretation, it's a bit easier to find that more unique result. And we're pointing at the proper drainage area from the model that we know is true. Now, one of the things we've done to make this more reliable is we've replaced the pressure component of the flowing material balance with a new pseudo pressure. The pseudo pressure is considering the changes in the saturations in the reservoir through time, and it's also considering the relative permeability curves that are required for multi-phase flow. Again, the video by Louis Matar that I've provided here in the link gives you a more thorough description. Let's look at another example. So in this case, what we have, again, is a hypothetical oil reservoir. In this case, we're doing pressure step downs. We're increasing the drawdown in these very abrupt steps. As a result, we can predict how the oil rates are going to increase and spike at those changes in drawdown. So when we perform our flowing material balance in the single phase way, we can see that we get these interesting transient effects going on. But if we can turn on the multi-phase option, we can see that we start to get a better result, a much easier interpretation. Now another improvement is the ability to actual model or history match this. Up here we can turn on oil rate, flowing pressure, or average reservoir pressure. And when we do this, it gives us another piece of information we can use to improve our match. Now this is especially useful if we have noisy data. Let's check out an example like that. So here I've got a well, it's a gas well, and the data is quite noisy, and I think we would get some different interpretations depending on who looks at this well. But if we turn on the multi-phase option, and then, for example, the flowing pressure, 
now we may be able to get a more unique match among all of our engineers for consistency. So that's one of the ways we can use this new modeling options here. Finally, let's look at another example here. So this is a unconventional horizontal multi-frac well, and right now we're looking at this in the traditional way, single phase FMB. And we get that typical curvature when we're in transient flow. If we turn on the multi-phase option, we can see that our data is repositioned, and in this case it gives us a fairly similar result for our volume and drainage area, but you may find some of your wells may change and uh, get a more reliable estimate. So again, check out the link I'm going to provide in the LinkedIn post and in the YouTube description for more details and more examples. But really, what does this mean for you? The biggest thing is now you can reliably estimate your fluids in place without shutting your well in, whether you're above the bubble point or below the bubble point, or the dew point, or if you have high water cuts. The other thing this means is if you are trying to monitor your well productivity, you can do it now more reliably in these multi-phase flow situations. And that's it. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please give me a call or email and subscribe to be notified of next week's DigiNew episode.